You want to help your child build a bright financial future, but how do you get started? While there's no one correct way to do so, a kid's brokerage account can certainly play an important role for some families. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into exactly what this type of investment account is and why it's so powerful. Plus, we'll cover the other financial tasks you might want to tackle before opening a kid's brokerage account. Hey everyone, this is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money, a channel dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. If you like what you hear today, please consider giving me the YouTube triple thanks. That's hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and then commenting down below. Thanks. Okay, what is a kid's brokerage account? Well, a kid's brokerage account is exactly what it sounds like. It's a brokerage account designed for children and for teens. Because they're minors and can't technically control their money until adulthood, these accounts are sometimes called custodial accounts. So what's the difference between a kid's brokerage account and a UTMA? Maybe you've heard that term before. In some cases, well, they're actually the same thing. There are two types of investment accounts that kids can have, and it depends on one key factor, whether or not they have earned income. Without earned income, a kid's investment account will be a UTMA or UGMA. Under the Uniform Gifts to Minors Act or Uniform Transfers to Minors Act, silly acronyms, you can create an account as an adult to benefit a minor. In most cases, this is a parent setting up an account for a child, though it doesn't have to be. However, if your child has an earned income with the paper trail to prove it, then your kid's brokerage account can be a custodian custodial Roth IRA if you want. Then their earned income can be a set aside for retirement. It's actually pretty sweet to think about how your teen is actually able to set themselves up for a better retirement 50 years in the future. It's important to note that these accounts are managed by an adult, but when they become adults, the money is transferred to them to manage or spend how they see fit. So why would parents want to open a kid's brokerage account? Well, it's not just about building wealth, although that's certainly part of it. Another reason to open a custodial account is to help your child learn about the power of investing. Research proves conclusively that there's no substitute for hands-on learning. The best way to make a money lesson stick is for kids to work with money themselves. That's where this kids brokerage account comes in. You can teach kids about different investment types as well as levels of risk when it comes to investing. Plus, you can use a kids brokerage account to discuss the power of setting savings goals. The teachable moments that come from a kids brokerage account are limitless. And of course, you'll also want to consider Consider this type of account if you are looking for a flexible way to build wealth. Whether it's saving for specific future milestones like a wedding or a financial cushion just in general, this brokerage account can help with just that. Are you ready to open a kid's brokerage account? Well, not so fast. Thinking about how much of an impact you can make on your kid's future is really motivating. It's really easy to get kind of caught up in the excitement, especially for money nerds like like me. But there are actually some steps you should take before opening a kid's brokerage account. Number one, put on your own oxygen mask. If you've flown on an airplane, you already know the drill. You put on your own oxygen mask first. It's true for airplanes and it's also true for finances. Before you open a kid's brokerage account and start funding it with your own money, you wanna make sure your finances are secure first. That means making sure you've tackled high interest debt or at least you got a plan for it. Plus, it's a good idea to build up your own emergency fund. Number two, fund your retirement. The next thing you wanna cross off the list before opening a custodial account for your kids is for your retirement. You don't actually have to fund your whole retirement or reach financial independence or even achieve Coast Fire, but you wanna make sure that you have a 401k set up through work or a Roth IRA set up on your own. Your kids can take out loans for college, they can take out loans for weddings, homes, basically anything, but you cannot take a loan for your retirement. So make sure that's set first. Number three, get college squared away. You don't have to have six figures set aside for college, but you do want to make sure that you've got a plan. That might mean opening up a 529 to let compound interest work its magic. You might also start having conversations about scholarships with your kids and non-traditional ways, including trade school and community 
community college. It's important to note that 529s can pay for those and if your child gets a scholarship, you can pull that amount out of a 529 penalty free. Number four, open a kid's brokerage account. After you've made sure to get a jump start on your own finances and plan for one of the first big expenses that your kids will encounter in adulthood, it's time to open that custodial account. As with any type of investing, you wanna pay attention to several different factors. Ease of use, transparency and fees, and reputation. To simplify the process, you can look into options that your current investment brokerage partner offers, or you can work with a platform like you Unest. Unest is a fintech company empowering parents to invest and save for their kids' future. They have auto investing and a user-friendly app to make the investing process simple and engaging. Let's talk about the advantages of a kids' brokerage account versus 529s. Now, there's a lot of great things about a 529, but there are some drawbacks. Within a 529 plan, the funds are earmarked for education. Most typically, they are used to cover expenses associated with college or university. The funds can also also go towards certain K through 12 expenses and trade schools as well. But if you use the money for non-qualifying educational expense, you can expect to pay a 10% fee and regular income tax on the earnings portion of the account. That's not the case with the kid's brokerage account. Instead, the money can be used towards milestones such as a first car, a wedding, a house down payment, or even education as well. It can also continue to grow for added financial security as your child navigates adulthood. But does a brokerage impact college admissions, you might ask? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe you heard that brokerages can impact college. That's true to an extent. No one is gonna turn down your kid because they have a brokerage account. But a kid's brokerage account could impact the type and amount of aid that they receive. A 529 plan is considered a parent asset, while a kid's brokerage account is viewed as a student asset. That means that when it comes time to file the FAFSA form to see if they are eligible for any financial aid from the government, the brokerage account could actually limit their eligibility more than a 529 account would. All right, let's talk about the power of compound interest with a kid's brokerage account. To keep things simple, let's say that you make an initial deposit of $10,000 and never add another penny to your kid's brokerage account. If that money compounds annually for 18 years at let's say 8%, it will be worth almost $40,000. But maybe they won't touch the money until they're 25. That initial $10,000 is now worth over $68,000. And what if they leave that money in the brokerage until they reach the traditional retirement age of 67? That $10,000 is actually worth more than $1.7 million thanks to compound interest. Of course, there are plenty of other ways to fund the account. Maybe you only open it with $100 or $1,000. Then you add to it when your child is gifted money for birthdays and holidays. Perhaps when they're older, they decide to contribute more money from household chores or from their allowance, and they add that to the account. No matter how you invest in a brokerage, the more time your money spends in the account, the more compound interest helps it to grow. To see the power of time in the market, spend a few minutes playing around with a compound interest calculator. I'll be sure to put one in the link in our description. Better yet, make it a family affair. If your kids are a bit older, if your kids are a bit older, this is the best math magic trick that you can show them. In the end, a custodial account is a powerful way to help kids learn about managing money and investing wisely. Plus, it can set them up for a better financial future five, 10, or even 50 years down the road. While this likely isn't the first item on your family finance checklist, it is certainly worth considering. Check out Unest to see how a kid's brokerage account might fit into your family's financial future. We'll have their link in our video description. Well, enough from our side, everyone. We wanna hear from you. Does a kid's brokerage account seem like it might work for your family? What do you think of a 529 versus a kid's brokerage account. That's a hot debate out there. Please let us know in the comments below. This is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money signing off. Carpe diem.